How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we are doing the Kansas City Royals, a team that has actually made two moves this offseason. Not big name moves, but they've added two speedsters in Terrence Gore and Billy Hamilton. So with this being the last team that I had to do for all of the rebuilds of MLB teams, I figured why not do that and make the change of adding Billy Hamilton to the team. So if you guys want to see some more offseason rebuilds with um, players that have moved this offseason, make sure you leave which team you want me to do. The big names haven't moved, so that's why I'm kind of holding off on doing teams um, that I expect them to move to. I think the White Sox might be a big, uh, big uh, player in the offseason. I think the Phillies might be as well. And I think there are a couple other teams. Um, you know, there's still Harper, Machado, and some other big names out there. So I kind of want to wait to see what the big name free agents do before I start doing um, some big name teams. But some smaller teams out there have made some moves and the Royals were one of them. I think the addition of Billy Hamilton is actually decent for a rebuild. So we'll have to see how it goes. So make sure you hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content. And as, and, and, uh, and as always, make sure you leave comments to let me know what you guys want to see for future videos. I want to keep the zero overall franchise going. So make sure you go and... Um, Catch, uh, catch up on the last video if you've missed that so i don't want to ramble on anymore um but let's let's get into this i am using the osfm roster the end of the season update i know they've been tweeting about making an uh an off-season roster um with all the new changes with all the new off-season moves so i'm going to keep my eye out for that one but this one i think was uh released in october um so that's the one i'm doing the end of the season update so let's talk about this team let's see what we need to do what changes need to be made and things like that so looking at the pitching the pitching starting wise and bullpen wise are big big concerns you know outside of jake junis and brad keller i don't really see players that are names that i'm going to keep around for too long jesse han yeah he might end up being a high 70 but i don't know if he's really going to be a player that'll help us out too much Ben Lively, kind of the same thing. He might hit the high 70s, but I need players who are going to be in their 80s, like next season um, type players. I know Jake Junis will. Brad Keller might as well. But outside of that, we're kind of lacking players who are going to help us out immediately. Brady Singer, Jorge Lopez, great prospects, but I don't know if you know they're going to be players who are going to help us in this rebuild. Um, outside of Brian Flynn, kind of the same thing with the bullpen. I don't know if the, any of these players are going to help us out outside of this season. Um, and the closer, he won't. So we definitely need a new closer. Salvador Perez, he's our starting catcher. We also have Cam Gallagher, um, Valoria, and Melendez. So we do have great catching depth, you know, and we also have those prospects. Ryan O'Hearn, I don't know about him. Um, I don't really know if he's going to be a good first baseman. I don't know if we're going to keep him around. Um, his face looks really weird for this edit uh, he just kind of he almost looks like a cartoon character his face looks so small um but if he plays well we'll keep him if not we might look to um improve um at the first base position Whit merrifeld not going anywhere um hunter dozier i have a player that i want at third base and hunter dozier might be a player that needs to be traded um raul mondesi our shortstop for the future we don't have to worry about him ramon torres develops quickly so he'll probably be our um, backup next season um, we'll keep escobar for this season alex gordon is probably going to be moved to the bench um, and this is my thought behind that um billy hamilton is going to be our short our center fielder brian goodwin or billy burns are probably going to be traded and then we have these three right here who all develop decently. Jorge Soler, I might move to left field or I might move Brett Phillips to left field. One of the two is going to be moved to left field. And then Jorge Bonifacio is probably going to be another um, bench bat for us in the outfield. We do have almost an overload of outfielders. Um, Matthias is also a good player who develops quickly. I think by the end of the season, I'm expecting him to be in the high 60s. So we're going to have to see how that goes. Um, so outfield, I think we're set. Um, I like Brett Phillips developing quickly. I think Soler is going to develop quickly. Bonifacio should develop decently. Billy Hamilton, if he hits the ball, which is a big if, I think he'd be fine in center field. So we definitely have a good outfield. And I do have some plans to strengthen the third baseman and first baseman spots if those two players don't work out in Dozier and O'Hearn. The big issue is the bullpen for me. Um, Pitching-wise, I think I'm not going to touch it first season. 
bullpen wise i definitely need to add at least an arm or two um we don't have a lot of budget space at all um so free agency really won't be an option unless we can find like a cheap uh player who is decent um we're not going to be able to sign harper we're not going to be able to sign any of the big name players we just don't have the budget for that so trades and the draft are going to be our best friend so hopefully we can make some moves that way otherwise we're kind of screwed so let's get into it let me show you the roster moves that i'm going to be making and i'll catch you guys in a sec all right we're making a trade with the reds rizel iglesias is going to be joining us here in kansas city ian kennedy valoria and brian goodwin are going to be headed to cincinnati we're getting our uh closer who has i think a three-year contract so we definitely so we have this season and two more after that we have good control of that contract we have them for the future i like that a lot i do have another trade i want to do i think i have two more for season one that i definitely want to make that'll solidify the bullpen a little bit at least the back end of our bullpen so i'll get that trade done catch you guys in a sec okay so i figured okay so this is the second trade johan camargo i think is going to be a great third baseman for us he's 24 b potential almost an 80 overall we get a setup man and aj minter 24 years old b potential 78 overall um i threw in freddie tarnock just to um you know kind of look even out the trade feedback spot um he's basically a low-end trade piece um, we're getting rid of Paulo Orlando aging player not gonna help us um, Hunter Dozier yes he does have a potential and he is a big part of this trade but he's older than Camargo he's lower rated than Camargo so I think we're gonna upgrade the third base position there and then uh, Danny Duffy he's got three-year contract he's 29 C potential doesn't have a great overall um, I like this trade i think it's going to be it's good for us we're dumping two million in salary on them which isn't a lot but it definitely is helping us out when we're kind of already crunched for um, salary space anyway so that's a good trade for us um i have one more let me make it and i think that's going to be it for season one all right we're adding derek rodriguez 25 years old b potential 82 overall hitcher the son of pudge rodriguez um we are getting rid of some prospects um nick prado and then two pitching prospects and Jorge Lopez. The thing with Jorge Lopez is he's 25 and he's only 64 overall. So yeah, he may be a top 50 prospect, but I don't know if he's going to develop quick enough and he'll be good enough by the time we need a pitcher. Um, and then Jackson Coar is another player that we're looking to move. We're getting a player who's going to help us out immediately. So we were in need of starting pitching and now we kind of added it um, in uh Derek Derek Rodriguez who's now our best starting pitcher so um I did want to add to the bullpen we really didn't um oh yeah we did we we got Rizelli what am I talking about we got Rizelli Glacius and AJ Minter um who's going to be our setup guy now I just need to get rid of the extras and I'll show you how we're going to be lining up for the rest of the, uh, or for at least the first half. All right, we're bringing in Kenyon Middleton, a player who I really like. Um, I know I just traded someone who I said was in their mid twenties and was in their sixties. The thing with Middleton is he grows extremely fast. Um, so he's a 69 overall right now, 24 years old, B potential. He also helps out the bullpen who we, we need more um depth and we we're getting rid of andres machado who's 24 59 overall along with the player we just acquired in freddie tarnock who's 54 overall who won't help us and tim hill who won't help us at all either so we're getting rid of 350 overall players for a player who may not help us this year but um one year in the minors we'll bring him up and i definitely think he'll help us um next season and to be honest i might even yeah he goes up to a 71 once you call him into the majors. So even pulling him into the majors now might actually be the move. Put him into the middle relief role. And already our bullpen looks a little bit better. We got a good setup. We got a good closer. Decent, decent middle relief. I'd actually say subpar middle relief. But it's a lot better than what we started with. We added a starting pitcher who should help us out a lot too. And then even our, our lineup looks decent. We have Camargo joining us. Um um brett phillips is going to be playing almost every single game um i moved him to left field so i actually might just have i might do that i might do what i'm doing right now uh solaire play right uh gordon play left or gordon brdh 
and Brett Phillips play left field because I want Brett Phillips to get as much time in the majors as possible and I feel like that's gonna be the best way to do it we don't have a lot of power we definitely don't have a lot of power but we do have a young team who hopefully will grow so I'll see you guys at trade deadline day and or not trade deadline day draft and hopefully we can get a player who can definitely help us out for the future see you guys at draft day Alrighty, it's draft day so let's 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 do this let's let's find someone who's actually gonna be decent for us michael hudgens was a player i had my eye on you can see he went eighth overall his stats looked really good um i think there was another another player i recognized the name of yeah this one robert sanchez he was another player i had my eye on as well so two players that i had drafted that i wanted have uh slipped Oh man, or not slipped. They 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 got drafted before we were up. I think we had the we have the 17th pick. So man, that's a that's a little sad to see. He was another one. Yeah. So man, oh no, I'm starting to realize like all the players I wanted aren't going to be available for us. We're gonna go Will Bryson out of Vermont, a switch hitting shortstop. He's six foot four. Um, his his stats just look decent. Decent fielding, decent stealing, plate vision, discipline, contact numbers look good. We don't really need a, a shortstop, but he's just one of the better players available um, in the in the draft right now. All right, we're gonna go Martin Thacker. Um, you guys always mention why I don't go after blue chip players. One, there's not many in this draft. I think all of them were selected early, and you also wonder why I don't have that many scouted. I have a lot of players scouted, but like I mentioned at the beginning of this draft, I had like three or four that I had my eye on and they all got drafted and I'll show you some of the players that we do have scouted um they're just they're just not that good um so Martin Thacker even though it says he's a 55 overall he's one of the better players that we have scouted that is available so we're just gonna go with him and this is where it gets tricky because I know all my players that I have scouted are gonna be gone now um at least the ones that I liked and I think we have a decent amount. Yeah, we have two picks here. We have a pick here. So we have three picks even before the third round um, in between the second and third round. So right now at this point, we have what? Three, four, five, six. We have seven picks that I have to guess on. So this draft is going to be very difficult like because we do have players that are scouted, but they just don't look good. Um, and I ha I've hired some of the best scouts that were available, but even then those scouts really weren't that good, which was unfortunate because we need good scouts to get good players. So now we're at the point where we kind of just have to guess and hope and pray we get good players. I'm going to give Richard Cochran a try. I mean, besides his home run or hits and K's per nine, most of those projected stats look decent. Um, we're going to go Edgar Castilla here okay projected stats he's a lefty and he's also a bullpen arm so that's something that we are in need of i'm gonna give dana ims a chance we don't have him fully scouted his stats don't look amazing but i mean again we're kind of at a really poor part of the draft <laughs> i'm gonna give Derek cruz a shot i mean all his stats are 80 he probably won't even be close to that but I mean, we're now in round three and we've already had like five picks. So it's it's kind of just weird. It was weird. That's like the weirdest draft I've had so far. Uh, Felipe Delgado will be our next pick um, because we have him uh, scouted and he's the last one that we have scouted. We'll go Darren Doyne. He basically has speed. Um, I don't think he'll have anything else outside of that. Um, so, But it kind of fits. An outfielder with speed. The Royals recently um, re-signed Terrence Gore and they brought in Billy Hamilton. So they may not be able to hit, but they definitely do have the legs. We're going to go, um, I guess we'll just go Derek Guildhouse, Guildhouse. And we got one more pick left. Oh, that's the end of it. Um, so let's see how these draft picks went. I'm very pessimistic about this one. I don't think this one's going to go well. To be honest, wow. I was wrong. Holy cow. This is actually a decent one. Will Bryson's a 65 overall. He's got good contact numbers already. Decent vision. Um, he was six. Yeah, he's six foot four. Like, there's his, those are his stats already. 65 overall. 89 potential. Jeez. 91 potential for Martin Thacker, who this was the one that I wasn't sure about because his ratings were so low. But his projecteds were really good. Martin Thacker, he's 59 overall, but he's got a 91 potential. Okay. 
Um, Richard Cochran, he's 59. Um, he's only got 72 potential, but um, so he's not really someone I'm interested in. Edgar Castilla, he does have 77 potential, um, and he's 50 overall, so that's not horrible, but it's not the best. Danny Dana Ims, Ims, um, good velocity. He's six foot five. He's 61 overall, and he's got 86 potential. Um, 74 potential for Derek Cruz. Um, I mean, along the board, he's not horrible. Um, so he might be a player that you know might be thrown in a trade. Felipe Delgado is a 47 overall, and he only has 72 potential, so he's not really a player I'm looking to keep. Darren Doyne, 95 speed. I mean, he's 57 overall. He's a 20 year old. He's got 95 speed, but he's got 88 potential. So. I might have been wrong about him. He may not end up being a player that we use in this rebuild, but he definitely looks to be a decent star. And Derek Guildhouse, um, 75 overall. He's got 78 potential, which isn't which isn't great, but he's got good stamina, decent decent case or per nine stats, 94 velocity. Definitely a player that, if we have an injury, could could help us. So there's the draft picks. I'll see you guys at trade deadline day. It actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. At the trade deadline, we are 42 and 63. Not the best, obviously. I wasn't expecting us to be really good, um, but I wasn't expecting us to be this bad. We're 29 games out. We're not even close in the wild card. We're 16 and a half. Um, let's kind of just look and see how things are going. Derek Rodriguez is He's actually, you know, going up a little bit, which is good to see. Derek or Jake Junis is up to an 80 now, um, which is which is good. Um, he's improving. This is what I'm looking for. This is season one. I wasn't expecting us to be amazing, but um, I just want to see development across the board, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing players increasing in rating. Birch Smith wasn't expecting much from him. He's just kind of that spot because we don't really have any other players who have long relief. Um, or high stamina in the relieving, uh, relieving position. Brian Flynn, okay. Jason Hamill was a player I wanted to move, but he didn't really have any trade value, and I knew he was going to tank in rating over. Anyways, um, Kevin McCarthy, he's going up a little bit. Brandon Maurer is going up a little bit. Kenyon Middleton, like I said, he's a player who develops quickly. He's already up to a 74, which is great to see. AJ Minter's up to an 81. His stats are going up. Rizel Iglesias, yikes. Okay. Maybe maybe swap them. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with him. He's gone down a little bit in rating, but that's okay. I he's not it's not going horribly. Looking at the team, Mondesi is up to an 84. You can see his stats are going up. Solaire is a 77. He's kind of about the same. Merrifeld's gone up one. Perez has gone up one as well, and his potential's gone up. Ryan O'Hearn, not amazing. I think he's actually gone down in rating. Billy Hamilton's gone up two overall. Um, Brett Phillips is up to a 77, which is great to see. Yoan Camargo is a 79 still, but his stats are starting to go up um, a little bit. I would like to see him go up a little bit more, so I might move him up a little bit in the lineup. Not necessarily a power bat or anything. It's just I, I want him to get a little bit, you know, just kind of start to increase in rating. And I think getting him more at bats is the way to do that. Um, Brett Phillips, I've already mentioned. And Alex Gordon, I, def I was already... I already knew he was going to go down in rating, so I wasn't expecting too much from him. Overall, I'm seeing development, which is what I wanted um, from the team, and that's that's what we're getting. So I think the bullpen is definitely an area we still need to work on, as well as pitching. So let's see what we can do here. I just I really don't know what we're going to be able to move unless we move some of our our better prospects. All right, so there was a player in free agency. I always forget that he's in there in this update. Um he's called Kodai Sanga. I completely forgot about him. Um so I brought him I forgot to mention that I brought him in at the beginning of the season and I always forget about him, but he always develops very quickly and like I said, we're kind of crunched for money. Um, in salary space and for a you know basically a free uh, a prospect contract we can bring him in he's mid 20s he's almost an 80 overall so it's probably not a bad idea to maybe bring him up for the second half of the season and maybe trade one of these guys and see if we can get a bullpen arm 
that might be the move so i think that's something that we got to do all right at deadline day we're going to be adding a relief pitcher like i said we're going after jose alvarado and jesus sanchez from the rays um jose alvarado is an 87 i don't think he'll keep that rating i think he's gonna be more towards like the low 80s mid 80s we're getting rid of nate kearns or karns as well as jesse han and alex gordon i know i said i probably wasn't gonna trade alex gordon but he's already down to a mid 70 and he's he's got a decent contract and like i said we're kind of crunched for money and i feel bad kind of trading like an a legend or an icon in the eyes of the royals and you know he's been there his whole career i just i just can't keep him we're crunched for money we need to we need to make some moves so with that being said we are going to bring up kodai senga because we need the pitcher he does drop to a 74 which is a little a little unfortunate to see but um i think i think we're good there pitching rotation wise now we just do this and then i feel like we're a little we're a little stacked here so we could we could probably drop someone from the from here probably jason hamill will move him to triple and then to be honest we probably could move two people down move mccarthy down as well and then we can actually bring up another bat which isn't a bad idea we definitely could use another bat ramon torres is already 70 so that's good to see like we definitely could use him but jorge bonifacio is a player that i think could help us out um a little bit since now we let um alex gordon go and that means bonifacio actually could be our dh and then now our pitching rotation is a little less crowded all right so i was looking for first baseman and uh tyler white looked decent you know a decent little bat and we kind of do need a little bit more power and Ryan O'Hearn really isn't impressing me. So I was like, hey, let's trade for, you know, a little bit older of a first baseman, a little bit better rated, but, you know, so I threw in Tyler White and they think this is a good trade right away. And I wasn't expecting that at all. And I'm okay with that. Like, I think this is a decent trade. If we can keep Tyler White on the team, now we got, we got a decent first baseman who is a lot higher rated than what, um, what was it O'Hearn was and I just feel like that was that, that wasn't a bad trade at all I feel like that that helps us out a lot you know we we added a little bit more power to the lineup and I can't I can't complain about that trade at all so now we're done trade deadline's done I feel like the team's a lot stronger than what it was I'll see you guys at the end of the season we finished 71 and 91 on the season so not not playoff worthy um but a, a little bit better league leaders was uh triples for mondesi no other awards or anything we finished second to last um 37 games behind the indians and 17 and a half games out in the the division so this is the playoff picture um it's pretty standard at this point not much changes but looking at the lineup camargo is still kind of at that 79 overall rating which i was hoping he, he would have at least cracked the 80 mark this season so hopefully he does. Mondesi is an 82, so he's been kind of fluctuating there. Merfeld, 86. Salvador Perez is a 92 overall. What? Tyler White's gone down a little bit, but you know what? He's still, you know, he's a 79, 33 homers on the year. I can't complain about that at all. That's good. Those are good numbers I want to see next season. Billy Hamilton, 234. Four. I want to see a little bit better. Brett Phillips is almost an 80. He's got a potential. Not, not a bad year at all. Solaire. I want the average up a little bit more, but again, not horrible numbers. And Bonifacio and his limited at bats, not bad either. So the lineup, I'm kind of hoping after the offseason will all be in the 80s at least. Bonifacio, maybe not, but the rest of the players should be. Um pitching wise Derek Rodriguez is looking decent he isn't only he is only an 84 but a 311 ERA a winning record with this team definitely can't complain about this Jake Junis is an 81 364 ERA is not bad uh Kodai Senga in his limited appearances I can't complain about that you know he's only 78 overall Ben Lively not bad either for his rating and then Brad Keller obviously on the lower end but he, he definitely was our worst pitcher but everybody else i can't complain about their performance throughout the season birch smith probably isn't going to be sticking around 
Ryan Flynn, not horrible. Could be a decent bench bat for the future. AJ Minter, or bench bat. What? What am I talking about? Brian Flynn, he could be a decent, an okay arm for us for a little bit um, until we can find a, a better replacement. AJ Minter, still in that 80 range. Kenyon Middleton, still in that 74 overall, but his hits per nine are increasing rapidly. And he had a 2.44 ERA on the year. Brandon Maurer is almost an 80, which isn't bad. You know, he's a C potential player. Jose Alvarado, 85 overall. Like I said, he'll probably sit around that mid 80s range. And Rizal Iglesias, he's a player that I've kind of hit or miss with. He either does really good or really bad. I mean, high ERA. Um, he's still around that 85 mark, so maybe it might be time for Minter to kind of move into that spot. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable with the team. I think we definitely will have some growth in the offseason, and I think it'll help us out. Um, but overall, I think really the only place we could improve on is maybe a better center fielder that can hit. Um, outside of that, I think the team next season could maybe maybe push for a wild card we definitely need to improve the bullpen and the, the um like the four and five spots in the starting rotation but i think this team is improving quickly let's see how the um oh let's see how our some of our prospects grew uh scoglin okay singer okay outside of that meh no one really for relief um no one there Melendez, okay, He's mid 60s. Uh, Ramon Torres, like I said, he grows quickly, so he'll be a player that we keep instead of Alcides Escobar, which is unfortunate because Escobar is a player that has been with Kansas City for a while. But again, it's just a player that I'm okay with letting go because he's, you know, what, 30. He's not going to grow much, and he'll probably want a similar contract to what Alex Gordon had. Bubba Starling, 70 overall. Okay. Billy Burns is 70 overall as well. And Matthias, like I said, is almost at that 70 mark. So let's see who wins the World Series. I'm probably projecting the Dodgers and the Astros to be in the final. The final, the World Series. But it's actually the Indians defeating the Rockies. Okay. A little bit different than the usual. Um, let's see who was the MVP. Michael Brantley. Okay. All right. So let's head into the offseason. And let's see if we can make any moves that'll help us out. All right, exclusive negotiations. I'm not going to um, bring any of those players back. They're just not worth trying to sign. Arbitration-wise, everybody got one besides Peralta. I'm probably gonna just try to move, like get rid of him somehow. Contracts-wise, the big ones, I'll show you um, in a sec. All right, so our offers are Alvarado's got one, Rodriguez, Mondesi, Camargo, Minter, Junis. White, Phillips, Senga, Keller, Gallagher, Lively, Bonifacio, Torres, and Star uh, Starling. The rest, the rest are basically like, oh, uh, Herrera got one as well. The rest are kind of um, prospect contracts. So like I've mentioned many, many times, we really don't have the money to go after any big name free agents. So looking at this, I don't know if we're going to be able to afford any other player already so looking at the rule five draft which is what we're in right now there are, there are some good players like you can see there's a lot of like uh top 50 prospects which would be great to pick up the issue is they would have to play in the majors and i can't have a starting pitcher in the majors that are, is only 66 the thing i do see which i like a dubrai ramos we need bullpen help he definitely can help us there sam tui Valala's here um yimmy garcia is here so there are some decent players um dan altavilla um not not horrible um aj reads here that's not not a bad one because we can't we do we do need a backup uh first baseman and that wouldn't be a bad one i'm gonna take ramos though i think that's that's not a bad little pickup there um aj reed just got taken oh man i was gonna take him this round that hurts that hurts um let's see so we'll have alvarado mauer middleton flynn you know what taken oh who's got better stats 
they're both of their controls pretty bad and that's that's what i'm kind of looking at like their control is pretty bad yumi garcia doesn't look bad um Uh, we'll go, we'll take two of Alala, and then I don't think we will need a, a reliever this year. I mean, one, two, three, four, closer, we got these two, five, six. So set up closer in those two relievers. Yeah, I mean, does any of them have a lot of stamina? Triggs has a decent amount of stamina. Yumi Garcia wouldn't be bad either. Just to even like get even better. Might as well take him. You know, you know, use the rule five draft to our advantage. I think that's it though. I don't think there's any other players that I see that would be like, oh yeah, <laughs> Jabari Blash. Alright. But I don't really see any other players here who I'm like, oh yeah, I want them in my team. I really wanted uh AJ Reed, but he got taken. So I think that's I think that's good. You know, three relievers. I think that's that's not bad that's not bad at all all right so i hop into free agency as i normally do at the beginning of every season and i found a couple decent players sean michaels here 18 years old i don't know if he was a, a free agent or a, a draft pick that wasn't signed or what but good power numbers good speed numbers 72 overall not gonna cost us that much another one Reds prospect, third base prospect, Nick Senzel is a free agent. We are definitely going to sign him up. And uh, that gives us a little bit more depth. We don't really need the help in the middle infield or like the corner spots. Uh, maybe the, maybe third base a little bit. But, you know, we don't really need, you know, the, sec the second base spot. We have Michaels, we have Herrera, we have Merrifeld. And then shortstop, we have Torres and Bryson, who we drafted. So... We're kind of almost overloaded in those spots too. So we might have some have some players to trade. All right, so we're going to the Mariners for Erasmo Ramirez. Basically, I need a long reliever. And I'm giving two 70, 70 rated players. I know it's probably, you know what? I feel like I don't want to overspend. So we'll give them Daniel Lynch and Maurer. Um, we're taking a, a little bit more salary, but we need a long reliever. I'm also looking to move Flynn and uh, that way we can bring up Middleton just because he's younger and I feel like he's gonna grow a little bit quicker alrighty so accidentally made a trade um, I was like just kind of quickly like moving moving through trades and picking players and not picking players and I made a trade where I traded Whit Merrifield to the Tigers and I, I didn't mean to I, I was like I was just I was quickly moving through stuff and I accidentally I accidentally um, traded them so the issue now is I have to get him back I have to trade Brady Singer and the issue is I haven't saved this file in a bit so if I go back I'm gonna miss a lot of stuff and I'm gonna have to redo it so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna have to trade Brady Singer it is it is a it is an issue I'm also trading Roselle or Razel Herrera but let me also talk to you about the trade that was made. We traded Michael Fulmer for Brian Flynn, Ben Lively, and then Whit Merrifield. Accident. Um, I was looking for a new starting pitcher, and I also wanted to get rid of one of our relief pitchers so that we could bring up Kenyon Middleton. Um, now we lost. Now we lost. Uh, two, two, uh, two pitchers that I one I didn't really want to give. I didn't really want to lose Herrera or Singer. I think they're both gonna be great players for us. They were gonna be great players for us. Um, but I I, I just completely goofed up. Um, but we got Michael Fulmer, I guess, which isn't horrible. Um, <laughs> you know he def he definitely is a, a good pitcher. You know he's got a potential seventy eight overall. He should once he gets past that trade decrease that happens when you bring in a new player he should be a very good pitcher for us um and then that'll definitely strengthen that the thing now is i think what i over selected 
on the um, Rule 5 draft. Because now our bullpen is a little bit overcrowded. And we could use a player for our, our bench. We definitely could use a player for our bench. Um, we're, we're a little, little light here. And I think, oh, we actually, we don't. We got this Shawn Michaels guy who can come up and help us right away. Or Michael, I'll let Michaels develop. We're going to bring up Senzel. He might drop under, yeah. Senzel, he, he's more of a all-around player. We also have Ramon Torres. Um, but Senzel can play the middle infield as well. Um, we, we don't have another outfielder. Um, we're a little low on the bench bats. Um, obviously we're a little stacked on the, the bullpen now, which may have been a little bit too much, but at the same time, I feel like if we could strengthen our bullpen and our pitching staff, I'd rather do that and then let these guys develop because we have a phenomenal lineup. We have decent bench bats. We have a very good youth core. Now I think this team is, hasn't been better. I'm going to save now so I don't do a stupid thing where I can't go back and fix fix uh, a mistake that I made. So I'm going to save it now so we don't have that issue. I'll see you guys at draft day because I feel really good about everything. All right. So at the deadline, we are nine games out. We're six games under 500 um, in the wild card. We're 12 and a half. Whoa. Um, let's see how the draft went for us. 93 overall player or potential. Um, we have Carmen Soto here, 48 overall. We'll, we'll sign him up. Why not? Um, Alden Blackwell, 76 overall or 76 potential, 56 overall. Eh, not the best. 84 potential. Ton Shern here. Um, doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad. 79 potential. Rick Hightower, 61 overall. Um, 64. Not gonna look at. Not gonna look at. Yeah, the rest. The rest not too good first couple picks not horrible so let's see let's see how everyone's doing Derek Rodriguez okay Senga's doing all right uh Junis is doing solid Fulmer is in 82 um would like to see him a little bit better and Keller's almost at that 80 mark um let's see anybody doing horribly Minter's not doing great Alvarado's not doing great either Iglesias is doing decent so maybe switch them to I want to get Middleton out of this spot because this is going to stunt his growth. But who do we move? Because maybe Alvarado because he's just having a rough outing this year. I don't know. I feel like everything's going great. And the team's looking decent too. You know, Ramon Torres, he's growing. Gallagher's growing. Senzel, not as quickly. But, you know, Mondesi is almost a 90. He's an 87. Hamilton's up to an 84. He's hitting 201. Would like a little bit better. Merrifeld's starting to decrease. So after we make that trade, now he's starting to decrease. Oh, man. Tyler White's up to an 81. Okay. Salvador Perez is still at a 90, but he's starting to go down a little bit. Solaire's up to an 80. Bonifacio's a 76. Brett Phillips is a 79. And Camargo has finally hit that 80 mark. Let's see those... Um, uh, uh, you know what? I might just move Middleton to Triple A for the season. Just let him develop, and then next season, he'll he'll help us. Thacker and Ims. Thacker was what like a fifty nine at the beginning of the season. He's up to a sixty two. Um, Melendez is almost a seventy. Michaels is a seventy six already. Holy cow! So he's gone up four ratings. Um, Bryson's up to a sixty eight. All right, so that was a rookie for us. Starling's still at that 70 mark. Burns is a 71. And Matthias is still a 69. I'm thinking maybe we send Senzel down and bring up Michaels. Michaels is just developing really quickly. I feel like Senzel is at the point where he might need another, another season or two to develop. I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe bring up Michaels now that we have that spot open. Well, I might as well, you know. Okay. All right. Um, I don't. What do we need? I feel like maybe the Billy Hamilton experiment is done. You know, he's hitting 200. He is an 84, but you know, we have Brett Phillips, you know, we have Bonifacio, we have Soler. Maybe see if we can 
figure out a new center field. We'll see. Alrighty, so we're making a big deal here. Um, Whit Merrifield is decreasing, right? And Billy Hamilton just doesn't hit the ball well. So why not pick up someone who can hit the ball well in Cody Bellinger? He's hitting, what, 299 on the year. He's got 21 home runs. I mean, it's, it's a big one. It really is. But it does kind of leave us at a gap at second. But now we got a center fielder who can hit the ball. Not a bad fielder. Decent speed. You know, we still have Soler Bonifacio there. And then might as well just now try to find a second baseman. I mean, we're making moves at deadline day. Alrighty, so Ramon Torres is a 78. That's not bad. I'm perfectly fine keeping him at second. And then, I mean, now the team is just looking really good. Um, I might do this, actually. I don't know why Bellinger would hit there. I'm... I'm liking this. I, we got some good youth talent here, like young young talent in Senzel and Michaels. I think we're looking good. The bullpen's look the bullpen's looking strong again. I'm gonna let Middleton sit in the minors for just a little bit more. Um, but overall, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing. That was a big trade for us. Um, he's got I think like three years left on his contract. So uh, let's see how the rest of the season plays out. Alrighty, so we finished 84 and 78. I mean, we're not a postseason team, but that's 13 more wins than we had last year, I believe. Um, so that's that's a big step in our like oh in the right direction. Salvador Perez won a Gold Glove, and Rizal Iglesias won a, the Closer of the Year, basically Delivery Man of the Year award. So that's a big step. Trout, 52 homers, almost 152 ribbies. That's massive. So let's see how the team's looking. I mean, holy cow. He's very unhappy, so we got to get him a better contract, I guess. I don't know if we will. Um, Senga's tied up for a while. Arbitration, so hopefully that picks up. But Derek Rodriguez is a 90 overall. That's big. Jake Junis is an 83. Not horrible. I mean, 13 and 5 on the year, under three, like 3.5 ERA. Michael Fulmer, not horrible. Kodai Senga, not horrible. I mean. Obviously, these three, I, I want I want much bigger things. For Fulmer, I'm expecting really big things because we messed up a trade because of it. Um, Erasmo Ramirez is up to a 79, 284 ERA on the year. Not bad at all. Edubre Ramos, okay, a little poor, a little poor. Tui Valala pitched 41 innings, had a 152 ERA. Yimi Garcia, 348. Alvarado is starting to go down. So he might be the one that makes way for Middleton next year. Minters up to an 84. And Iglesias. Whew. 44 saves how many blown saves five not bad but he's up to an 89 i'm gonna take it he looks like he's he's catching stride so mondesi is an 87 or 85 he was an 87 at deadline day so he's gone down a little bit Ram, ramon torres is a 79 cody bellinger is an 88 uh tyler white's an 80 so not horrible he hit 15 homers i think that's down yeah that's definitely down from last year Salvador Perez is starting to decrease. I don't like that at all. Um, yikes. All right. So Lair's up to an 82, though. He almost hit th 300 on the year. 31 homers. Bonifacio hit 29 home runs. That's good. That's good production out of him. Brett Phillips is an 81. And then Camargo is an 80. And his potential starting to go up a little bit. That's good to see. Cam Gallagher is up to a, almost an 80. So even if Perez starts to, you know, fall off, we could always use Gallagher. He didn't hit the ball well at all, but, you know, hopefully that changes. Senzel is up to a 74, which is good. And Shawn Michaels is a 73. A little worried that I may have pulled him up just too soon, which may have stunted some of his development. Um, pitching prospects, we don't really have much anymore, if any at all. Uh, Kenyon Middleton's a 74. We have these two for closers, which they look like they will be amazing. Melendez is almost up to a 70. Uh, let's see. Bryson's almost up to a 70. Nicky Lopez is a 66. Starling is still a 70. Sanchez is almost a 70. Um, who's this guy? Whoa, whoa, where'd this guy come from? I mean, he's 25 and 66, but where, I, didn't, I didn't sign him. Um, maybe the CPU did because at one point I got a message that the minor, one of the minor league teams was under, uh, didn't have enough field 
position player so I said auto fix so maybe that's where it came from but um, I didn't I didn't bring him in Doyne is up to a 60 Khalil Lee is up to a 63 and Gigliotto is up to a 60 and then Matthias is finally a 70 so we do have some good position players our starting pitching prospects are looking a little weak but um, definitely could be a little bit better um, for the pitching prospects we definitely need to look into that but overall the team's looking decent um, we have the ninth overall power that's not bad we're 10 games out there and 10 games out on the the wild card this is gonna be very difficult to make the playoffs but let's see who wins this year for the world series the cubs defeated the athletics the athletics making the the postseason okay and the world series to be honest it's pretty big so hopping into the offseason hopefully we have the budget to keep most of these players that's my big concern heading into season three so we'll see how it goes alrighty so exclusive negotiations we did offer ramirez a contract it was about four million three and a half million um so hopefully he signs that all right so we offered both of these guys arbitration moving into the contracts we don't really have any big ones which is huge because we probably wouldn't have been able to afford everybody otherwise Alrighty, starting season three we're going for a double herrera 85 overall center field there and you're probably like wait you already have cody bellinger in center field the thing is what i didn't notice at the end of last season was tyler white's power both of them dropped and especially his power versus lefties i think it dropped like 10 points which is a lot and we need up we need some power in our our lineup and if he's not going to grow too much more i'd rather get rid of him and we have cody bellinger who can play first base so why not move him to first base trade tyler white trade jose alvarado who just isn't really pitching like i thought he would i knew he would settle around the mid 80s but he's just a 5-1-5 ERA is just not good enough. Um, Odubel Herrera is going to come and play center field for us. We're going to move um, Cody Bellinger to um, first base. That way, we don't have to worry about not having a first baseman anymore. He goes up to a 91. We're going to fix the lineup. I'll show you how, how we're going to play this season and just sim and hopefully make the playoffs. Alrighty, so this is our lineup. Sean Michaels is bumped up to an 82 over the offseason. Massive growth. Cody Bellinger is now a 91. Salvador Perez is a 90. Solaire is an 82. Bonifacio is a 79. Brett Phillips is a 78. And Camargo is a 79. Ramon Torres is a 77. Gallagher is a 78. And Senzel boosted up to a 78 in the offseason as well. Um, pitching prospects, still no one big. Um, bullpen is okay. Um, and then we do have these two right here who look amazing for the future even ton shern looks decent as well um other prospects for the field you know we we still have will bryson nikki lopez uh bubba starling jesus sanchez this guy deweez jr don't know where he came from khalil lee uh darren doin gigliato uh matthias like our outfield and infield is perfect for the future um, we got Derek Rodriguez Michael Fulmer Junis Senga and Keller Keller obviously the weak link in the starting lineup but it, it's not horrible our bullpen Ramirez Ramos Tuivalala Garcia Middleton Minter and Iglesias so from what this team was till now we're looking good and I mean you're looking at a 24 year old a 19 year old 28 24 29 28 26 25 and 26 and then on the bench you got 27 at 27 and 24 like that's that's young you know you got 27 here 27 there 27 27 24 and then ramos is 29 this ramos is oh no ramirez is 29 ramos is 27 tui valala is 27 garcia is 29 middleton 26 minter 26 and iglesias just hit 30 this is a young team definitely still has room to grow this is going to be the last season i'm hoping wild card spot if we don't make it i wouldn't be surprised but i think we can do it so hopefully we do catch you guys at the end of the season so we finished the season 97 and 65 we made the postseason a wild as a wild card team and we're gonna be playing the red Sox. so i was actually worried because you see this little streak right here i thought this was going to be the end of us i didn't think we were gonna um 
make the playoffs. I didn't think we were going to make it. Um, but this last month was a really good month for us. So let's see how everything went. Odubo Herrera had the doubles leader hits. And then Cody Bellinger had base on balls. Awards went to Salvador and Perez. Salvador Perez and Brett Phillips for gold gloves. Trout back-to-back -back MVPs. Looking at our lineup, Fulmer's up to an 88. Okay, 14 and 11, 367 ERA. So it's an improvement from the year before. Derek Rodriguez is starting to fall off, which is not good. Jake Junis is an 81. Um, Kodai Senga. Okay, and then Brad Keller. All right. I mean, Derek Rodriguez up to this point was doing really good for us. Um, Jake Junis, pretty similar. Like, he's been pretty consistent um, throughout the years. Sanga had a better year than the year before. And then Keller, pretty pretty much the same. Fulmer, definitely a big improvement from the year um, previous years. But it looks like Derek Rodriguez has kind of hit his peak. Arat... Erasmo Ramirez is an 81. Um, Ramos, 84, so he's gone up. Definitely an improvement from the year before. Tui Valala has gone up a little bit. Not as good as last year, but still a decent bullpen arm. Same with Yumi Garcia. Um, Kenyon Middleton's up to a 76. His ERA is pretty high. He didn't develop as quickly as I would have liked, or you know, even hit the point where I would have liked, which is unfortunate. And then Rizal Iglesias, 48 saves on the year. How many blown saves? Five again. So he's kind of, you know, he's been consistent for us as well. So look at this lineup. This is going back to like the the good days for Kansas City. A very strong lineup. You got Mondesi, who's an 87. You got Odubel Herrera, who's an 87. He hit 323 on the year with 31 homers, 117 RBIs, 14 stolen bases, a 390 on base percentage. He was a great pickup for season three. Cody Bellinger is a 95 overall. He hit 48 homers, 113 ribbies, and a 304 average. Shawn Michaels, his potential is starting to go down, but he is an 83 overall. Most likely due to his um, personal performance, he might be better suited to sit in the minors for another season or two because he is 19. It might help to kind of let him grow a little bit. Salvador Perez is a 93 still. Like he's an amazing catcher. One of the best for a franchise. Soler is an 87. He hit 26 homers, 95 ribbies, a 301 average, and a 386 on base percentage. Jorge Bonifacio is even a decent outfielder. 83 overall. He hit 285. Brett Phillips is now an 80. And then uh, Johan Camargo is an 80. So these two... I wish they would have developed a little bit more. Unfortunately, they didn't. Ramon Torres is an 81. Um, Cam Gallagher, not a bad backup. And then Senzel, 79. Not, not bad at all. Um, starting pitching, like we've mentioned, is pretty weak in the prospect region. Um, Jason Adam, where are these guys coming from? I don't sign these guys. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Dana Ims has been overtaken by Ton Shern and Martin Thacker. Probably because he's been in double A. He probably should be in triple A, but Thacker's almost a 70. He's going to be amazing. Melendez is almost up to a, a, you know, a backup spot. Like he's a 73. Uh, let's see. Short stops. We have Will Bryson, who looks like he's going to be a decent player in a season or two. Nicky Lopez, probably time to move on from him. Bubba Starling is a 71. Sanchez is a 69 still. These guys are slowly developing. And then um, Matthias is now a 74, and he's got some power about him. Holy cow. But um, this team is looking good. And like I said, it is a very young team. You know, Mondesi's got another year or two. Oh, Herrera's got a couple years. Bellinger's got years. Michael's got years plus arbitration. Salvador Perez has still got some years on his contract. Like, I'm pretty sure we've set this team up to be good for at least another two, three years before we start hitting some financial problems. Um, like Fulmer, he's going to hit arbitration. Rodriguez, we've got locked up for a while. Junis, we got locked up for a while. Like this team is set. I know, like I can just quickly check the, uh, like you can see, uh, we Mondesi's in what two, like this coming season. So his season, his is out. Iglesias runs out this year. Soler does. So we might lose one or two players. But overall, this team is set up so that we're either having arbitration or we're set contract-wise and we shouldn't have any issues. 
So now we play the Boston Red Sox for the wild card. So let's see how it goes. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. I almost simmed the offseason like an idiot or sim to the offseason. I want to play this game. Michael Fulmer versus David Price. We are the home team. I didn't even show you guys the standings. We were four games out in the central. We had the top wild card spot by a game. Okay. Okay. And that's the uh, playoff picture currently. So if we win this, we will take on our divisional opponents in the Indians. So let's let's do this. Um, yeah, we'll rock the light blues. Not bad. Fulmer will take the mound. And this is the Red Sox team. Beckham, Dozier, Martinez, Mookie Betts, Jose Abreu, Nicholas Castellanos, Devers, Springer, and Swihart. Um, against a lefty. Um, I guess, yes. Yeah, I guess we'll go, uh, we'll go with that. And let's see how it goes. Good first inning for us, pitching-wise. Not hitting-wise. And it's one to nothing in the second. Yikes. We got to get... Okay, Perez, all right. First and second, Shawn Michaels, fielder's choice, Bonifacio singles, ties the game up. I like to see that for sure. I don't like that, but he was thrown out at home. That's good. Mondesi, Herrera, Odubel Herrera makes it a two to one ball game. And we're, we're in a good spot now. Fulmer just, you gotta pitch, you gotta wheel and deal. And we, we, gotta, get, we gotta get another insurance run. And that is why, double play, that's the third out. So heading into the bottom of the fifth, like I said, we're gonna need insurance runs. Mookie Betts is causing some problems. We get out of that. Odubel Herrera, can you do it again? You can't. Cody Bellinger, singles. Okay. Perez, Soler. Ah. Seventh inning, double play, and a ground out. That was probably Fulmer's last inning. I just, he's looking a little low on energy. Okay. All right. First and second. Pitching change. All right. Hmm. Do we have anybody that hits? righties well i'm pretty sure bonifacio hits righties pretty well so i'm just gonna leave it no outs first and second bases loaded for brett phillips two runs come home there we go we get another couple runs in and that is that is that was perfect there's the insurance run we're gonna make a pitching change we got a bunch of righties coming in we're gonna bring in uh we're gonna bring in mentor you know it's that time of the game yikes what's going on all right iglesias i guess we, we got to do it with you oh my gosh what is going on uh yes there we go iglesias comes in closes it out oh man whoo we're taking on the indians that was uh that was hectic. That I didn't like that at all. That that got a little too close there at the end. The first game we win against the Indians. Second game we win. Third game we lose. And it comes down to this. We were up two to nothing. And we let them come back into it. So we're in Cleveland for this one against the Indians. We got our ace in Fulmer. We got the full lineup facing the righty. You can see the Indians lineup. Pollock, Nyquin, Donaldson, Ramirez, Lindor, Puig. Alonzo Cervelli and Souza Jr. Okay. We gotta we gotta strike first. That's that's key here. And of course, I say that what happens? We are down one to nothing in the first. Shawn Michaels, though, gets a double. We gotta capitalize on that. We don't though. Man, that's not good. And now we're down two nothing. Five to nothing. Six to nothing. Oh man, what is going on? Seven nothing. Oh, steal second, please. There we go. Okay, we're on the board. Oh, okay, okay. All right. It's a little bit better. <sighs> Yikes. We really. Oh, man. We really are in a tough situation here. Okay. All right. Come on. We got to get something here. Mm. Double to start it off. Okay. A all right, three run ball game. Double play. Okay. Eesh, it's a four run game. 
You know, it's not, you know, we, we've shown we can score runs. We just can't allow runs. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Bellinger, Michaels, Perez. Okay. Soler. No, man. Come on. All right. You're done. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Oh, no. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Why did, oh. Hmm. I meant to hit pitching change, not walk batter. <sighs> All right, it comes down to this. <sighs> Man, six runs in the second? You got to be kidding me. But you know what? I'm, I'm not disappointed. Let's see who won. Dodgers defeated the Athletics. All right, man. I I'm, I'm a little disappointed that we 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 went up to nothing and then we lost. Um, but to be honest, I could definitely see this team going in next year and just being an absolute tank. This team is unreal. Maybe pick up another starting pitcher, but overall, I I like this team. This team is very well rounded. It's got power. It's got speed. It's got hitting. It's like a contact, decent pitching. I, I like this team a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed this Royals rebuild. If you did, make sure you hit the like button down below. I mean, this team is amazing. Like this team is really good. They're pretty young. We've got good contracts for the most part. Um, and I, I really think this team would be good like next season, the season after. I really enjoyed this one. So I hope you guys did too. If you did, again, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content. In the comment section below, let me know some other teams you would like to see rebuilt once some more offseason moves are made. Um, and then I'll definitely get to that. And I'll definitely bring you guys some more zero overall franchise. Other than that, guys, this has been a really fun rebuild. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.